it's gone. And he's still like, he drops it and runs over and he's just like, Mason, you're all gray. <laughs> Mason's really weak. Uh, yeah, hi James, okay. Um, um, they kind of like hug each other and pat each other and you look at them they look pretty similar they're probably related um two of them look over at you and like, thank you wait are you are you because uh, <laughs> like i've been sitting over um mason and i'm like are you are you james yeah mason and james <laughs> Yeah, we were we were sent here from. Sorry, let me get into the camera. Um, we were sent here from uh, Greens by Greensboro by Katie. Katie Lentz. Oh, Katie made it out. Oh. Yeah, she's safe. Oh, that's great. Um, well, we uh, we just hopped into the boat, tried to go down river, ran into trouble on the way. Eventually we uh, we were forced to beach on on the, the, the riverside and then, and then that thing came out and it's been <laughs> real bad. And, <clears throat> and uh, uh, Mason's the one that was infected and um, he's sweating profusely and he still like doesn't look that good like you you seem to have given him like some life force but he's still infected i'm just gonna step forward and um touch your hand to him okay um to try to use lay on hands to have the 5 hp and remove a disease or poison effect okay um so how much hp are you giving him starting with five because that's what it takes to make that happen okay so um you you touch him gently and then imbue him with healing magical energy there's a little bit of a glow he does seem to the, the coughing seems to like ease up a little bit um but he doesn't the gray the graying doesn't change um so the removed disease uh sickness doesn't work yeah, it didn't seem to work. Uh, it's not really a disease. It's more of like being touched by a, a foreign energy from a different plane. <laughs> well, um, um, what are you guys doing out here? Uh, not many people are looking to go into the forest with all this crazy stuff happening. I, I point... Well, mainly it's the crazy stuff happening. <laughs> I point to the remains of the shadow thing as it's, like, dispersing. I'm like, we're doing that. Oh, great. That's great. Um, well, if you, uh, just go up a little bit more north, you'll come over to Dark Ponds. Just watch out, because the shadow thing is... <clears throat> real hard there. The two of us barely made it out. I hope Harmony's okay. Sheesh. I think she saw her. Uh, well, honestly, la yesterday afternoon, before the attack happened, she was out in the water when it did happen. Uh, so, maybe they didn't see her on the water? I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. Has he seen a little girl in a blue smock like this? No, but that sounds like Jill. Did she get separated from her mom? Yeah. Oh, no. And they, they look pretty upset over that. They're like, oh, no, shaking their heads. It's, just, it's terrible. Well, we're going to head over to Greensboro. Uh, no, I, and James is the one who wasn't sick. He's like... Positioning his like weakened brother in in the boat, and he's just like, yeah, we really, I really gotta get my brother somewhere safe. Really quick, before sure. you go, is is there anything that you guys saw encountering these these shadow beasts? Well, um, came from the northwest. That's where it hit us real hard. First, we were on the southern part of the. <laughs> the hamlet so you know we managed to just kind of scrape out of there oh, man. It, uh, 
at this point they like have um, kind of like all, any of the stuff that they gathered um, that had fallen on the boat they've kind of like gathered and they are ready to like shove off again and it's just like oh, just, that's anything else I, I mean that's about it we got out of there really fast you know just yeah they start seeing people act crazy killing each other you know we don't really stick around thanks so the Thank you. The shadow creature has been defeated, and the two men have been rescued and are now on the way to Greensboro. And you found out. Did we learn any? Sorry, did we learn anything new while I was away to care for several small emergencies in a row? Uh, not, not really. Cool. We, we know um, that they are north, are they the tree? northeast. I mean northwest, which is where we were heading. Mm-hmm. Very you guys keep all right so are you guys sticking to Oops. sorry i'm it looks like it's a situation of uh, eggs that is since the time is unbeaten since we should be dead now um, uh does it's the smoke when it dispersed it's they left nothing behind right nope didn't leave anything just an empty space. Okay. So, are you guys going further up the river toward? Yep. All right. Yeah. So, you guys, yeah. um, <clears throat> she, uh, pack up your whatever. Um, so, you, yeah, you guys keep walking forward. The I'm keeping an eye out. I'm like constantly scouting to see if we'll get ambushed by any shadow monsters. Because since we encountered that, I'm like these shadow monsters might be. Large. Okay, so you guys continue walking through this dense forest. It's still and quiet. They, um. Should I make a perception check? Sure, you can go ahead and make one. No, man, not, not the hottest. But. Oh, that's not bad. 16. 16. Peel your eyes. You just look around. The. You haven't really seen much of anything. It seems like the forest is just kind of actually genuinely quiet right now. You guys um, push forward through the, the thicket. A couple a couple hours go by because you're walking along this trail. You come to a covered bridge that's about 70 feet across. Uh, Beyond the bridge, the, the trail curves to cross the bridge. So if you're going to follow the trail, you have to cross the bridge. Uh, it spans the width of the Black River. It's wide enough for carts to cross over, and uh, it looks relatively untouched, but one of you kind of like toes the, the wood of it, and it seems to like creak unnaturally under your weight. You're like, ooh, uh, this, this, rick this bridge is kind of rickety. And, uh, you guys, uh, look yeah, down. I'm a little nervous at that. Oh, ooh, and, yeah. Uh, you guys look down at the, uh, river. Um, someone make a perception check. Okay. I'll do something since I have okay. to do it. Come on, Me? Okay, yeah. I need it. Oh my gosh. Why can't I perceive? Oh, the lady in the gloves. Thank you. <laughs> um, all right. I rolled a three. And then my perception is plus four. And then, and then also another plus four. So we have, we have numbers. We have 11. 11. You know, you're looking. You, uh, you know, you're kind of checking out this bridge. It's, it seems like the shadow that's affecting the whole area, it has weakened this bridge. So you might want to be careful crossing it. Uh, you kind of lean over and look down into the river. At this point, the land has elevated, so it's a, it's a bit of a drop between the, um, the bridge and the river below it. And I remind you, it's it's a big river, okay? It's like, it, in the middle, it's like 30 feet deep, okay? And uh, you look down, you see something moving in the water, but you're not sure what it is. Um, I have an idea. I mean, I can cross the bridge first. 
I mean, I'm pretty light, and to be extra careful, I can turn into something smaller. Use it to help with my spirit friends. You yeah. can probably identify some of the more stable parts. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. So I am going to hold my staff close, and you see that the leaves start, like, um, my leaf hair starts to, like, engulf my form, and then they just kind of wither away, and then what's left behind is a small little, a small little mouse with, like, streaks of like green almost like moss through its hair so is it like racing stripes or are they like little patches of little, moss little patches of like yeah so like a rock but with a little, mo- little yeah. patch of moss on yeah it. like a little mouse uh, and so, I'll plus, I'll plus, I'm not feeling any guidance for whatever it is you need to do while you're crossing um yeah I'm just gonna cross the bridge so are you just crossing or are you trying to identify stable areas um I am going like as I'm crossing, I'm going to um, just kind of like, like I'm not just like making a mad dash. I'm like crossing and just like kind of like jumping on like certain um, uh, boards just to see what's like stable and what's not or what's like tricking me most. I, I think that could either be like, like a perception. That would be. I actually would think it would be investigation or if you really wanted to survival because survival is about building things and learned skills and investigation is about drawing logical conclusions so you could do either okay uh i'll do survival use your rat stats um, actually it's a <laughs> um, as a druid you keep your mental stats. Yeah, mental stats. oh cool i didn't know that <laughs> I'm a DM, I don't know everything. That's, well, it's okay, it's, it's not here. It's a lot to ask. You have a lot to Yes! Natural 20! Ooh, okay. Ooh. Ooh. Knowing it's of all the knowers that ever knowed anything that ever needed to be known. Using my, my rat survival. Ooh. Okay, okay, so you softly across this bridge and you kind of jump here or there listening to the creaks and wheezes of this bridge and um, I'm pretty sure you identified a pretty good pathway for a light rat-like creature and hopefully for other people as well. <laughs> Alright, and then I come across and I come back and I'm like, okay, so what you gotta do is you gotta go on the third board and then you gotta go on the sixth board, seven, and then you skip you skip the eighth one, you go to the tenth board, and like I just give like those type of instructions on like just like <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. We'll okay. go first because he's light on her feet. Okay. All right. So I like just go. We're gonna do interesting things. Um, instructions. Do you think giving instructions more of an intelligence thing or a charisma thing? What was she doing to do them? I guess. Who me? She she was telling you what boards to stand on. Yeah, I was telling you specifically what boards. It's more of an intelligence thing. Well, like I with a coin, if you can't tell. Well, yeah, I particularly know what they are, but I guess. Three, six, eight, ten, board, and then I lost track. (laughs) Okay, uh, Ellie, do an intelligence check, and Luna do a dex check, and then I'll. Do a break. Dex or acrobatics? Oh, okay. Acro- uh, either is fine. Okay. Well, would it mean knowing what it is help or? It lowers the DC. Okay. So I make an intelligence check. I am oh. 13. Okay. And I got a 16. Okay. Yeah. So, um, Luna manages to get across the bridge safely. Takes a little bit. It's there's a couple of moments where you hear you go, 
over and you're like, ooh, uh, and kind of pause and kind of nimbly tiptoe across. So Luna's made it across the bridge. Okay, Keanthi, did you get that? It's it's up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. And then BA right, start. Right, left at the same time and then do back at the same time. Quarter right, circle, right, quarter right, circle. Right, circle. Right, that come in. Yeah, you, you quarter circle, quarter circle back. <laughs> Okay, same thing. thing. All right, same thing. So I do intelligence. Intelligence and dex. I think Ellie guidance, but not oh, the other one. Yeah, that would be great. So you gave me guidance? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> To imagine like as I'm just like barking orders, you're just like patting your hand on my back and like you're you're doing good. There, you got doing this. Good. You got this. Where else the four? Fourteen. Okay. What'd you get, Kristen? Who's Kristen? Kathy. You got a natural twenty. Well, that is. Okay. That's yeah. She. I switched to my D twenty to not have the good one there. Yeah. They they have good moves and bad moves. So, uh, Kayanthi, no problem. You are used to precarious terrain and being light on your feet, so you get across this bridge without issue. And last but not least is Kiara. All right, Kira, you take the, the first player controller, you plug it into the second player port, and then... <laughs> 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 or is it PC talk? I'm not sure. Sorry, I was speaking Druidic. <laughs> oh, right. Uh, <laughs> put on game chart. Please put the Alan Mack in Abyssal. Does it put C to crouch? Um. <laughs> Alright, and so I, I do uh, another intelligence. So with Kiara, she is deceptively heavy. Uh, it's just... <sighs> It's the armor and the muscle. It's just like, you know, just in case of cave-in, I have to be hard enough to put the sand things. Yeah, she's, she's, she's dense. Do you like crawl? Or? Okay. Um, I hold on, like, I basically have death grips on, uh, on the, uh, on the... Railing? On the, ra on the, on the rope railings as I go across because it's like, oh, something snaps to me. Yeah, I have to hold on to something. To it's, like. You're basically like a toddler in the jungle gym. Just... Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be the toddler that broke the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to be that guy. The kids will only remember. <laughs> okay. So I roll for dexterity. Yes. Yeah. Kiara, yeah, like, mm -hmm. but very obviously, like, sweating it just a little. Don't know what's down there. Oh, that one. Whale. No, no, wait, wait, the other one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> your other left. Which left? There's only one, right? I got a 15. Okay. And that's close to with my dex. So 16. 17. 17. Okay, 17. Okay. And what'd you get, Michael? I got a 14. Okay, so. Rolling surprisingly well on my intelligence. Yeah, okay. So there's. Kira goes slowly, inched across the bridge. Fleet's kind of clinking here or there. There's a part where you guys like all kind of jump because her foot like goes through the bridge and they're see her like <laughs> dangling there for a second. Then she kind of pulls herself back up and then <laughs> slowly kind of tiptoes across the bridge. And then you all release this collectively held breath as she puts both feet on either side. <sighs> Heavy boots. <laughs> heavy boots. Well, we would have had a heavy heart should you have fallen. We only just met you. That is now that he's crazy. Thank you. Thank you. I can swim, I think. <laughs> hey, Luda, I've heard of that song. That's a good this question. is crazy. <laughs> That we're in right now, that's under the yeah, they have underground rivers. So, yeah, you would have learned to swim. That's a really like basic survival skill. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I got the Okay, we're good. Okay, so 
you guys make it across the bridge. And the bridge is right basically at the doorstep of Dark Pond. So you guys have made it to Dark Pond. You reach this small cluster of houses that is Dark Pond. And the houses are in disarray and the collection of abodes cluster around a dark central pond. Um, the area around you is dim with a veil of shadow. Even with the help of your magical lights, it just doesn't really seem to help. Uh, the, the darkness stays firmly in place. The air is thick and dense so much so that it, it, there's like a weight to this area. Six of the houses here have um, been like damaged. The, the doors have been busted in. Like this place is a wreck. Everything's in shambles. You see like people are just dead on the ground. Like whatever happened was brutal and, and sad. And um, you uh, approach the you like kind of approaches the a building and um you basically just want to like put your hand on like uh, one of the railings to like lean on and your hand actually like goes through it yeah i like what? i take my step and i like knock on one of the doors and then i imagine it just um i guess nobody's home make um You guys, do you guys want to search for the little girl? Yes, it's really right at him somewhere. The girl's time for Harmony, whose last location was on the lake, so... She might not have come back. Nice or, or she knew she knew it was coming. Yeah. Yeah. You guys... Yeah, we can search for her. Okay. We roll. Where are you searching? Um, we're not looking to search for clues, gang. How, how are you searching? What are you doing? trying to think of the like what kind of place would a five-year-old hide because right now a five-year-old or six ten-year-old ten. ten-year-olds are, ter- are terrified right now yeah so, like they'd probably be looking for like small spaces or places that they think look safe or yeah something that looks familiar to them i mean we can search inside the houses yeah okay okay Cards. so um we'll have um get, you guys can do uh investigation checks Luna, and I'll give her um, advantage. Okay. Okay. I got um, 19 before. Mm-hmm. Uh, 25. Oh, right. Nice. So you um, you approach one of the houses. Like, okay, maybe she's hiding under a bed or something, or in the closet, and you actually like physically pass through this building. Like. It's not actually there anymore. And you kind of wave your hand around like, whoa. Um, it's, it's, it seems like it's, it, you know that there's been a, basically a leak in the, in reality. So uh, this might be an effect of that, where reality is like, well, like a part. Yeah, and Thank like you. this place might have been engulfed by, partially by the um, shadow plane. Yeah, let me just finish a little bit more of Luna's thing. So, like, and uh, you, but you do see that um, in the kitchens, like, there's food half eaten. And, like, it looks like people just drop stuff, like plates have cracked on the ground. There's just a broom in the middle of the floor. You know, whatever happened, like, it happened fast and people tried to get out quickly. Um, You're checking the houses. you're not finding the little girl. Um, now, what does Kaelthi want to do? Kaelthi, well, 
Kara mentioned to me that light and shadow and campy. It's like, well, I know I can't do much, but I can glow. So she wants to try and do some glowing things and see if that affects the shadow. Hey. You know? Okay, okay, yeah. So you go up to one of the houses. Are you just like... Use with your, hands. are you just using your mouth or are you using pressure digitation? <laughs> you, uh, you have I thought my hands could like glow and I could try and touch something. And that, and oh, burning hands? Yeah. Well, I don't think no, I have burning hands yet. Well, she can yeah. shoot like sun bolts, so I think she just wants to make her hands glow. Oh, yeah. okay. Pre sun bolt. Yeah. If light makes it somehow tangible or something, that's what you're thinking? Yeah. I mean, that's a good, good idea. Okay, yeah. Um, so you concentrate your radiant energy in your hand and then try to, like, touch the, um, like, a beam from, like, someone's front porch, okay? And, um, you feel like... Your hand passes through it initially, but you kind of keep your hand there for a minute, and then you put both hands around the beam, and it starts to actually, like, begin to, like, it's like the layers of shadow are are peeling away or burning away, and then, like, it starts to actually kind of materialize again. But as soon as you take your hands away, the shadow just kind of eats it back up. So, you'd have to get a lot of light in. Or, or, or to fix the problem. That's super cool. Okay, so Fiancé goes back to everyone who talks about what she found about how she, if some sort of radiant spell or radiant power would be able to bring it back, but it goes away right away. She's, she's explaining it in a way where she's kind of like, she feels like she's made a discovery, but she doesn't know what she's talking about, so she's kind of, man, I touched it. I was, the light in my hand, but it, usually it hurts, but I feel the, the shadow there. What do you think that means? I guess she wants to pull back the shroud of darkness, everything might come back, who knows? I mean, it sounds like your light was bringing it back from the, the shadow plane. Mm-hmm. So it's just going to put sunlight functionally back on this. So this is finding the source then. Stuck in the shadow. So, oh, oh, here we go. We'll find the, the, the epicenter, if you will. But it's looking like the, nothing is here, like, quite literally. Even the houses aren't here. They're just shadows of houses. So what about the people? The shadows are dead, but I'd like to hope for... Yeah, we haven't found any people. I haven't found the people. Okay. You know, they call out everybody, just in case. I got two that. Yeah, I'd work, so let's do it. So you guys are kind of sitting and communing together, and then you guys, um, you hear a little girl scream. Ah! And, and, and this little girl in a blue dress comes out from um, the area where, like, the boats were kept, and behind her are, are six shadows. Look at over there. Yeah, so you guys... Yes, yes, so, uh... Okay, so you guys can get a surprise round on these six shadows that are trailing the little girl. Oh, snap. So what do you guys want to do? I want to throw a moonbeam on them. I want to punch them with my light so they didn't do anything last time. Okay, um, how big is the radius for moonbeam? It is, um... Foot radius. Okay. Uh, it's 40 feet high. 40 feet high. All right. So, Luna, you, they are in the, they're chasing the little girl. Um, so uh, I'll tell you that, like, you'd have to stop them, uh, if you want them to stay in this moonbeam, because otherwise they're just gonna, like, go around it or walk through it, and so. Well, it's a matter of them starting their turn in it. Okay. Uh, and then um, I can just move it on my turn. Okay, so you, um, so what you want to do is kind of like calculate where they're going to be and then have them be in it? Yeah. All right, cool. That works for me. Uh, um, 
So that would be number one. That would be number one shadow. <laughs> Luna, are you attacking the same shadow as Kiara? Um, she, she would be trying to concentrate as many as she can into the deck. Okay, so Probably we'll four, say four three, we'll say three and four. Um, well, actually, I'll roll. I'll roll. Okay, so Kayanthi, are you aiming for the same one? Well, there's like one, and you said three and four. We're, we're at number two. Uh, yeah, I can have you hit number two. That's your even up and damage. Okay. And uh, Ellie, what are you doing? Um. Yeah, I. What I do is. I um. Take my staff and I um, caress some of the dew coming off of some of the leaves, and then it like crystallizes into this I this icicle like knife and very much as I've seen Luna done many a times, I fling it and cast an ice knife. Okay, so they're kind of um, are you throwing it at any of the other ones that they're targeting or the ones at the back? Let me see my range. It's about six of your range, so you I'm throwing it them. more towards the back because it like explodes. hits one guy and then explodes in like a five foot radius okay, around them. Okay. So I should be able to get a couple of dudes. Okay, yeah. It should. Um Okay, so, um, Kiara, you're doing magic missile, so roll your damage for that. That automatically hits. Magic missile automatically hits. Okay, yeah, a spell okay, attack. Do additional damage uh, with the one D4 plus one, right? Um, so I think are, that's just it. Yeah. Yeah. Are you um? Yeah. Are you casting at a higher level? I'm level five and at the level one. Yeah. So if you're doing it at level one, it should. You can cast them at higher levels. That's what it's asking. So you can expend higher a higher spell slot to use. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but if you're casting at first level, that's fine, too. So, yeah. Okay, so if it's level two, you cast, you use a, a second dice. Yeah, you add an additional. Yeah, you add an additional d4. The additional d4 plus one. Yeah. Three and three. Okay. Yeah. Plus one each or just plus one in general? Plus one each die. Each die. Okay, eight. Nice. Yeah, you, um... Yeah, she would be trained, like, as a wizard, so, like, you you run your hands over your, um, bracers, because that's where you have, like, your, um gems that are embedded in there and then um, kind of extend your hands so you like kind of tap them both and then extend your hand and um, the the gems glow and then out of your fingertips these bolts of magic energy spring forth and like little bottle rockets go and peg themselves into the first shadow beast uh, like the little girl manages to get a little bit further as he is pelted by these magic missiles, then um, uh, Keanthi, you roll to hit with your sunbeams. I do two, right? Yeah, you have two, so... Okay. So one was a nat one, that's cute. Uh, that was the one that doesn't like you, but the one that likes you gave me an 18. 18 hits, plus, definitely. Um, yeah, 18 hits. Well, plus whatever, I got five. But, um, oh, wait, it's plus eight. That's uh, okay, so one goes. 
Oh, nice. So, like, you um, step forward and do. <laughs> you do one punch and uh, one punch. Take you take a strong mountain stance and go pow with your fist. This radiant energy erupts from your hands and then blasts the shadow and it just vanishes. Because you, like, in one hit, take this dude out, and then you're just like, yeah, man, I did that, and kind of accidentally fire off another one, you're like, oops. <laughs> <laughs> it is this is with all of one's head, like, oh, break. Okay, and Luna, yeah, you go next. Yeah. So they need to do saves, right? Yeah, they need to make con saves. Okay. They both failed. All right. Jenny's are gonna take damage. Yeah. Ten radiant damage. Ten radiant. Yes. Nice. 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 So, Luna, you take out your your rapier and point it at the sky, and then like bring it down in the air in front of you as you like it, it glows with this radiant light, and then brings down this beam of energy down from the sky, crashing down into these two shadows. They look really bad, like hanging on by a thread bad. Okay, Ellie, you're next. Okay, yeah, I, I rolled my dice already. I, I have to roll to hit. Unfortunately, I rolled a nine, so I'm pretty sure that misses. Is the nine total? Yeah. It's a five plus four. Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 no, oh, wait, sorry, I added the wrong thing. Um, it's, it's 12. I don't think that's hit. It does hit. Oh. Yeah, oh, okay. their AC is really low. Okay, uh. <laughs> oh, not that. Uh, sorry, let me go back to the spell. Because uh, I think it's just a D10 on hit. Yeah. So the knight embeds into one of the shadows and it does three damage. Okay. And then it rattles and just bursts out. So, um, shadow creatures within five feet of that guy have to make a uh, deck saving throw. He failed. Um, he got how, like how many am I able to? You can get those two. Okay. Uh, so I rolled um, eight damage. Okay. Um, I cast a second level. One is dead. The other one looks really bad. So, like, you um, throw it and it embeds into the chest of one of them. Ah! And then it bursts. As soon as it bursts, the one that took the the knife to the chest just evaporates, and the second one like flinches as it takes some ice damage. And then um, now will um, now it's technically combat. combat. Um, so I'd say roll for initiative. <laughs> yeah, but I forgot which one likes me. I think it's this one. All right, this is the one that likes me. Going early in the initiative. Yeah, we're still gonna be going really soon. Like, 
it's just she's gonna go right before now, you. So. I yeah. trusted this guy. I trusted it. You were supposed to be the good one. Okay, oh, Ellie, what'd you get? I got um nineteen. All right, Kiara, what'd you get? Twenty-two. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, I got a girl at a random nat twenty. I was like, that's cool. I literally went. Okay, Chaosy, what'd you get? Twenty-five. Yeah, she was. Plus five, so it's a six. Yeah, so she's right after Luna. Okay. Oh, okay, that's with Pythias. Right, got it. Yeah. Um. And he's interested with the guy rolling okay. four. I thought it was just a reasonable one. So, first up is Luna, second is Kayanthi, then it's Kiara, then it's Ellie, then it's Shadow, and Shadow, and Shadow, and Shadow. So after a couple of them are taken down, the little girl goes and um, she she runs towards you guys, saying that like she's smart enough to be able to tell that you guys are people and are trying to help her. So she's going towards you guys. Uh, Luna, you're up next. Okay. About the shadow things move. Um. Yes, they have. So they should probably. Yeah, I'll use my action to pull it closer. Okay. And uh, are you? You are you attacking the nearest one? Um, to the, I guess like is there still much of a group of them or? Um, you guys, there are two that are close to each other. Okay, I'll try to get those two. Okay. And they need to make deck saves. Uh, con saves. Con saves. Okay. Well, that's fine. Neither of those things are great. Succeeded and one failed. So one got a natural 17, the other got an 8. Okay, um, I rolled, a, I rolled 10 damage, so the one that failed takes 10, the one that succeeds takes 5. Okay, so you move the moonbeam. Um, another one of the shadow beasts just evaporates, and then um, the like residual radiant energy just kind of like burns it, and then it jumps back. Um, you, you did some damage to that one as well. Next up is Kayanthi. Ooh. How many are left again? There's three. Three. Cool. Um, I want to try and hit the one that. Is there one that no one's touched yet? So I can get them. They've all been touched. They have been touched. Good. Um, like Duck Duck is. Right now. <laughs> oh. um, I'm, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I've seen that book for sale. Um, anyway, <laughs> get that going. Um, okay, I don't want the one that's hanging on by a thread. How about like the one that was hanging on? Okay, so um, the closest one and the furthest one look about the same. The uh, one in the middle looks um, really roughed up. Let's do the closest one then. Okay. Alright. I'm doing my sun bolts again. Okay. So I got more of it. I got two 18s. So Those I'm both hit, here. yeah. And I got two threes. What the heck? We're twins. Alright. So that's eight plus eight is 16 damage. Okay, yeah. So you do a um, axe kick in, in, you know, just sweep it down and then send this arc of radiant energy towards that first one it just poof gone the one dead you got another attack this makes me feel good oh, I, did, I did two at once no that was yeah that was that was two attacks oh okay okay yeah you like axe kick to a side kick boom boom like crisscross the monk, is, the monk gets three attacks no you have a bonus action yeah you have a bonus action for attack then yes you can bonus action. Why not? Let's go for the one in the middle that's hanging on by two. Okay. Sixteen. That hits. Alright, and then uh, one plus six. The one plus five is six, so that's six damage. Yeah, yeah. So after the axe kick, you come right. Uh, axe kick down, side kick, and then just a, a quick like Sparta kick, just boom, and you just bust out a little little poof of light, and that all that one's also gone. I feel very powerful. Yeah. 
powerful. I appreciate this. <laughs> <laughs> My ego needs to be fed at all times, unfortunately. That's just what I noticed in here. Kiara, you're up. <laughs> There's just one left. There's one left. Get it, get it, get it. Looks pretty beat up. Alright, and are they close enough for me to do melee damage or should I just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can easily, if they're like 15 feet away, you can easily close that distance. hugs you tightly. <laughs> she looks over. It is all right. Really? Oh, oh good. Because everyone's dead. And I got lost from my mom. And I really need an adult. <sighs> we are looking look to all of us. Oh, good. Um, I don't suppose we... Okay. Um, Should we take her back before we head out? I don't want to go alone. Please take me back. Where is it? She's, she, she kind of sniffles and says, I don't want to go alone. I'm really scared. I okay. stayed under, she points over to the boats. And she's like, I was, I've been hiding under the boats for like, I don't know, hours. I'm not sure. Well, we can take the boat back to um, Greensboro. I think, yeah, that should actually be faster. Are we gonna go down the river or along the coast or something? The river follows the trail all the way to, uh, all the way back to where we started. Yeah. Yeah, the river flows to Greensboro. Yeah, so we can take the boat. And then we'll continue our onslaught. Excellent. So, and we'll do just that. Um, Kira does look around a little bit, trying to, like, uh, 
towards the river like as uh, she kind of looks towards the village. Just being like, oh. Now, granted, you've been under a boat. You wouldn't happen to have noticed or heard any other boats that are not there, have you? Um. I don't think I've heard anyone on the water. Uh, just those shadowy thingies. You can, they kind of do this like <sighs> sound. But no, I haven't heard anyone in the water. Um, I, I remember I saw James and Mason leave on their boat. Um, and I, I think Harmony said she was, uh, I think Harmony might have gone upstream or something. Because um, I, I think I caught her, I, when I was running, I, um, in the, with my mom, I saw her going upstream. I'm not really sure why she'd go that direction, but she went first. We did run into a few more of your friends that you just mentioned, so you won't be the other one friend. So let's get you home. Oh, um, let's get you to your mother. Yeah, it was <laughs> smart for you. With mom and sister. Uh, <laughs> that's not how that, work, that works. <laughs> yeah, it was smart of you to hide underneath that boat. I guess you have a stern sense of survival. Let me see if she'll get that. It's like 10. Okay, yeah, she gets it. She's just like... <laughs> roll to hit pun. Roll, 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 roll to hit pun. 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 Roll it's a good stopping point. Yeah, this is yeah. kind of seems like a good stopping point. It's going to be a while before oh, the whole thing wraps up then. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so pretty much once we reunite her and then we can end up getting a rest and then that's where we'll be on the boat and then to be continued. Yeah, so we'll say that you guys get on the boat, um, write it down, and you're back to Greensboro. The um, mother and daughter have a very touching reunion. Katie, uh, you bring Jill to the door of the the inn, and she runs over to her mom, and she they embrace they embrace each other and start crying, and and uh, you see over like um, let's see, it's uh, James. James is there, and he looks pretty relieved. Mason is the one that was infected, and um, he you find out that he's currently like bedridden and trying to like shake off the infection um and um he can't keep down food which worries you and um so i get the sense you might want to try to hurry up because it looks like even if you do kind of give them vitality with magic they might just eventually starve from this magical infection, infection essentially. They might just continue to just drain them over time. Yeah, just kind of suck the yeah. drive. It's everything. Yeah. yeah. And, um... It's okay. It takes a couple of days before they die of starvation. <laughs> we got this! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're very positive. <laughs> Maybe keep lights on around him. <laughs> Oh, the innkeeper's just like, oh yeah, that's that's actually a pretty good idea. And then she goes and like gets some more candles and lights them. I don't know if it'll work. Do you guys want to stay at the inn? Oh, um, sure. Okay, so for short rest. Are you guys doing a full or are you guys staying for eight hours or just uh, probably eight hours? Eight hours to get us like our cell phones back and stuff, but no, we're in a we're in a rush. I mean, didn't you say we had like three days or something? Mm-hmm. Right at the beginning, this is the thorn moon, that's three days. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know, I thought I heard we had like three days to figure this out. Yeah, that's what she said. She wanted okay. you to try to do it in four days. Mm-hmm. 
Hi, this is Tigna, your DM. Thank you for watching Dungeon Damsels. This is not the end of the session, so please stay tuned for the next part. We update on Tuesdays and Saturdays at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you're interested in supporting us more, please push the subscribe button, like, or comment. We also have a Patreon, wink wink nudge nudge, and our show is in podcast form. You can find us on Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Podbean, Spotify, and plenty of other podcast platforms. Thanks, we hope to hear from you soon.